saying at that time is exactly what you said is the people who were taught about water were like this is all foo foo nonsense he doesn't know right. anything it's witchery right it's always witchery so <laughs> you know it's whatever so woo woo, he, woo, woo. so it's all woo woo <laughs> so he is like no just try it just trust me Right, welcome to the New Age Human Podcast. I got my friend here, Matt Roski. He is, um, actually, no, I'm gonna start that over. No, I did say it right. You did say it right, yeah. Okay. No. All right. Welcome to the New Age Human Podcast. I'm here with my friend Matt Roski, and he is the founder of Cultivate Elevate. We're gonna have an interesting conversation today. First, thank you for coming on again. Welcome back to the show, Rod. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. I think I'm overthinking your last name. Okay. Welcome to the show, Matt. Welcome to the show. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. So we talked about some very interesting stuff with frequency, energy last time. This time we wanted to give it its own time. We were going to talk about water and you mentioned something in a different show that you've done on a different interview and you mentioned primary versus secondary water. Can you start to unravel what that is? Yeah. So primary water versus secondary water is basically the illusion that we are running out of water, right? They're using this illusion that we're running out of water. You know, they want to usher in these taxes, these new laws, all this nonsense to basically control people, not to allow them to be able to garden, you know, do gardening, you know, do the things that they've been doing for the longest amount of time and basically giving them the fear tactic or scarcity tactic saying that we're running out. So the difference between the two is you have secondary water, which is the water that comes from the sky down onto the earth, goes through the rainwater cycle, drives down the mountains, and supposedly fills the lakes and the rivers and the oceans and all the other things and whatever else. So that's what we've been taught, right? So when that runs out, basically what they were trying to say is then we will run out of water and our lakes will run out, our rivers will run dry, and our oceans will run dry. But in reality, there's water that comes from up inside the earth 24 7 365 and is always regenerating it's called primary water it's what fills the springs the creeks the oceans the lakes every single thing there's water coming up from inside the earth that's the combination of hydrogen and oxygen combining together to make h2o to make new fresh beautiful clean water all the time it doesn't have fluoride doesn't have heavy metals doesn't have pesticides doesn't have chemicals it's beautiful living water so we've been sold this whole basically situation that we are running out of water, but we're not looking at the type of water in which we haven't learned about, which is the primary water. And there's two great books people can go into this just so that they can get more knowledge on this because I always try to give sources as well. But it, one book is called New Water for the Thirsty World. That book came out in the 1960s showing that we weren't running out of water and that person who wrote the book actually presented this to many different local uh, governments and showed this and they drilled wells that had unlimited water at that time and they basically just said we don't want to do this anymore we're going to go over here and then you also have the primarywaterinstitute.org which goes heavily into this topic as well to show also that we're not running out of water and that there are solutions to this situation as well okay and it's interesting how you broke down how we were taught secondary, the whole idea of being limited on our water. And, and then there's, there's books on just diving into that. Is there any body that has successfully been able to cultivate that primary water for society? Is it being used now, but we don't know about it? So if we were to go into that, the, uh, Paul Power was one person who was big into drilling wells that were giving primary water. But what he did was he took dousing rods, which are basically brass or copper rods, and he'd go out into the land and he'd be able to find where the primary water is because the primary water is spiraling like a vortex and creating energy the entire time, right? Because it's mm. flowing through the earth. So when you take these, these dousing rods and you walk over certain ley lines where the water is spiraling and being pushed up, you can, they will cross and it'll say the water's right there. So you drill right in that spot and you'll find water. And if we go back into time, we look at 1950s Lake Elsinore. And this is a great example. 
Lake Elsinore was running dry. The, the you know the, the the city didn't know what to do in California. They're like, oh, we're running out of water. We're going to build these pipelines and move the water somewhere from somewhere else over here. Well, when they went to go build those pipelines, they went dry because it, well, you can't just move water from one place to another and think it's going to last forever. So they went dry, and they had a guy come out who had dousing rods. And he said, if you just drill right in this spot of Lake Elsinore where it was dry, you'll find water. He goes, just go about, you know, I think it was like a thousand feet down or 500 feet, whatever it was. He goes, you'll find water. They didn't listen to him. They drilled another pipe and they spent more millions of dollars to do the exact same thing. He goes, just listen to me. So they call him out again and he shows them again, this is the spot. Just drill right here. You'll find water. Just trust me, you'll refill the lake. And what happened was, was shortly after that, they decided, okay, you know what, we're, we're, we're going to listen to this guy because what was happening at that time is exactly what you said is the people who were taught about water were like, this is all foo-foo nonsense. He doesn't know right. anything. It's witchery, right? It's always witchery. So, you know, it's whatever. So woo-woo. He, woo-woo. So it's all woo-woo. So he is like, no, just try it. Just trust me, you know? So anyways, they drill right in the spot and they hit water and they refill Lake Elsinore and within about, I think it was about two weeks or three weeks, some short time, people started going back to the lake and the lake was filled and the water was there. So it's like, you know, we're sitting here going, oh my gosh, you know, the rain, the rain, the rain and this weather and whatever. But if the water's just below us, then why don't we just tap into that? And it was interesting because when I got into learning about all these lakes, right, these these man-made holding tanks is which, which in which they are. A lot of them have been disconnected from the primary water that flows through the earth when they started building all these dams, right? They put all these dams to block up the energy flow or the free energy that can be about from coming back into the lake so that they would have something run out, right? Because the average lake only holds 40% water. It's usually only sitting at 40% the entire time. So Hmm. think about this. If there is a fluctuation in your fish tank, right, because it's like a fish tank, but if you have a fluctuation, it looks like we're running out. But in reality, it's always low all the time because you disconnected the water source. Interesting. So if the water source was still connected, it would manage itself. You got it. You wouldn't have to be all mathematical. Um, Would it be safe to say that that's done on purpose? And would would it be safe to conclude that, you know what, we want people to depend on us, whoever us is, so that we profit from it. And the less people know about the reality of it, uh, the better for us. Or do you feel like people are just ignorant? I would say it's on purpose, right? Because if you look at multiple factors, right? So 2021, let's go with 20, let's, let's make it real simple. So 2022, there was the mega drought, right? They're saying the water's going to run out and whatever else. 2021, the water went on the stock market where they can adjust the prices and basically price gouge water. That's so insane. just before the drought occurs, the water can be manipulated in the price, and then you can say we're running out. You know, So that just so happened to happen just before that. The other situation is, which I was reading a book by Peter Tompkins where he talked about dousing and all of the, how everybody's been doing for a long period of time. Right? They used to use dousing rods back since the dawn of time, right? To find water, to find gold, to find silver, to find metals. I mean, they used this because it was a very simple way. They would take a hazel, basically a hazel wood stick and be able to find things and whatever. Mm. But it was interesting because for all of the science being woo woo, right? The companies that use it the most are medical companies and Uh, electrical companies. So you have companies like GE who actually call out a dowser, even though it's woo woo, they call out a dowser and they find primary water so that they can keep all of their electrical apparatuses, which require unlimited water, running the entire time. And then you also have the medical companies where every time they make a pill, guess what they use? Primary water. But what's interesting about the primary water that they use for their pills is that they deionize the water before they put it into the pill. So they take out the electrical charge or structure of the water so that you now have a toxic water entering your system. And what happens when you move, remove the electrical charge from your beautiful body, your body ends. That's the easiest way to say it. 
So if we look back at these things, we can see that between the price manipulation over here and the big multi-trillion dollar companies using this, it's like they obviously know. But then all of a sudden, you know, if you talk about this, it's 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 false and misleading information. And it's you're, like you're everybody crazy. knew who. And then there was an interesting article that relates one more to this, which was in 2014, where they found out that scientists were finding out that there was an entire ocean underneath the ocean. Right. So now this is like you're completely mind blowing because you're going, OK, there's water underwater. OK, so then <laughs> how much water is there? Right. Like, yeah. I don't think we're running out now. We could be looking like that on the surface. And that's that like bait and switch tactic that they can use. But in reality, there is plenty of it. And for example, me and you could go hiking and I could show you water coming out of the mountain all the time. It's always there. It's always present. But if you're seeing something on, you know, the media that's showing you something different, then you get a different, um, you know, mentality ingrained into your head. And then you're freaking out and then you start to panic and you don't use logic. And then you start getting scared instead of realizing, hmm, well, if we're not running out, then I guess it's not that big of a deal. So it's just these different things. And that's why I say it's deliberate manipulation. I like how um, you tied it in with being in fear versus just being knowledgeable because I'm right on the same page with you. And I think that's where you're going in general, where you're of the energy of let's get out of this energy of fear understand what's going on as you educate yourself you can be more discerning on what's really going on and dodge the unnecessary bullets of um the water that is deionized right you might want to ionize your water or find your own source of primary water now interesting on the energy side of water and primary water the consistency of it do, do you have to filter it less because from what I understand, it, like primary water is like the main water, but it does go through some nasty nastiness on its way to you. And I say nastiness as in like, you know, the soil, the ground, the rocks, the minerals. We don't know what good minerals, bad minerals. Like what are your thoughts on like needing to filter that primary water? So the difference with the primary water versus if you're just tapping into like an aquifer that's maybe below or whatever else is that it's going to be very, very clear, very, very clean and very pure. And it's going mm. to be structured. Right, so that structure is what's gonna be very healthy for the body, right? Because you're bringing in this live structured crystalline water. That's what your body's made up of. That's why when mm -hmm. we begin to age, the water, the crystalline structure begins to fall apart, right? And when we're exposed to all this, these frequencies and all of these things that are microwave technology, they cook the water that's inside the body. So same thing with the water that's on the surface. But the cool thing about primary water is that you don't need as much filtration and all of that other stuff as well. Because when you start to bring in structured water into your body, you know, the body begins to heal and you actually need less of it. Because what's happening is, is this water is losing the hydrogen molecule. And then you are basically more, you need more hydration over time, right? So for example, you know, you're always thirsty because why? You're not getting the structured water that you're supposed to get. So what are you trying to make up for it with? you know, maybe some additional sea salt or something else. But when you start touching structured water and primary water, you're instantaneously hydrated and you're supercharged with energy because what are you taking in? Ample amounts of energy into this energy being that we are. Versus when we're using, for example, like you just said, maybe water out of an aquifer or city water, which is loaded with fluoride, pesticides, chemicals, all these other things. All the good stuff against the body and it's breaking down the blood brain barrier so that these toxins can go up into the brain and into the body so they've inverted this beautiful mm -hmm. water you know and the other thing is a lot of houses back in the day also had copper pipes they had copper pipes because copper can help restructure and keep the structure of the water flowing like a vortex right like a spiral and they had those copper pipes and things used to be built with curves which is how water flows. When we build in straight lines and make things completely like a straight line or a box, right? Then that's not how water flows. So water is being damaged going through that mechanism. So when you start to really look at how we've done everything, 
it's kind of very the opposite of how nature does its thing. And a lot of this was presented with Victor Schauberger's work back in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s with vortexing and how water is supposed to naturally do its thing. That, I never knew that we had wavy piping systems. Like, is there, are there any places where you can go to see that or any reference that you can see like a rounded piping? Because if it's rounded, that means we know something because I, at least logically, it doesn't make sense to just curve the piping system into your home versus just go straight in because i you know I, we were i was bred into the system where a straight line is the fastest way to go somewhere um i mean i know you uh, you must have seen that in, in a book but like what age or, or what you know, what like time range was that like, you know do you have like an idea of like when they started doing that or when they stopped like that's weird so 1930s 1940s victor schauberger created a bunch of pipes that basically can curve and that was replicating mm. what he saw in nature Right, so he saw that when you were to move something, if you were to create a curve, it would cause things to levitate as they floated through water. So for Wait, example, what? a salmon, okay. right? The salmon doesn't go upstream. The salmon actually levitates. It causes vortexes when the when the when the fins are going. It's actually causing vortexes so that it can levitate up the stream. So the same thing goes with the water situation. Is when water is spun through a vortex and and. Think of it like those uh those straws we used to drink as a kid that would spin the water when you would drink it. Yeah, it was like yeah. all in what structured the water, and you're like, oh, this water's real good. Well, it's <laughs> real good because it's structuring the water the entire time, you know. So we did that with pipes too, as well. You know, back in the day, they would do that with the pipes, and they can they could basically structure it. Or at the end of let's say the water coming out, they would have spiraled pipes, and it would go through that and structure the water. But a lot of this is just mimicking, if you go back into like a lot of the old world technology and like all the different, you'll, you'll look up like these water spouts or where the water used to come up, of, up from inside the earth, they're all in a vortex, right? Like they're all in lines that look like a vortex drawn into the earth and the water would come up through that and spin, right? At the same time. So you'd have a vortex going up and a vortex of the water and then if you grow plants in that area, you get even more abundance of food because it's a vortex of energy. So basically with Victor Schauberger's work, he just realized that if we go against nature, it will destroy us. And if we replicate nature, it will be everything in harmony. And that's where all of this strange stuff come, came about, like even like you said, with building in straight lines, because you're, as the, everything's built in straight lines, the water cannot flow left and right, right? You go mm -hmm. to a river, and the water is going all different directions, creating all different types of vortices the entire time. There's life, there's all that. But when you build in a straight canal or a dam, right, where you just pool all the water, now you have this dead, lifeless water sitting there, which what does it do? It starts to build up all this buildup. And a lot of people with their pipes have a lot of buildup in their home because the way that the water is flowing is straight and not curved. So they start to get all this like debris and like gunk on their pipes because water is trying to basically, you know, move it through, but it's now all the stuff is building up in all the different spots on the pipe. And then all of a sudden they can't push as much water over time because it's not flowing like water is always moving or like a raindrop, right? Which is electrically charged. Mm. Mm. Um, that reminded me of something because you mentioned uh, the flow and maybe the geometry of the flow of the water um, structures it and I've also heard of people getting structured water and then dropping it into a dirty a glass of like dirty tap water and that just cleaning it it's structured because you drop structured water in into contaminated water all the contaminates all the contaminants <laughs> separated and I think floated and just separated um, so it, it I know that water has multiple multiple phases that it goes into that most people aren't aware of um what are your thoughts on that whole process like um you know like i, I know there's ways that we can apply that but like you know what, what's your thoughts on that so with structuring water there's some simple ways that people can structure water and we can talk about that as well too because i feel like both those go hand in hand mm -hmm. like dr Amoto had some work where he was talking to water he wrote love on water he wrote bad words on water yes. and he got two different results when he would freeze it basically that was showing the crystalline structure 
But what you just described is basically you're taking structured water, pouring it into your water, and then that water will take on the same consciousness of that structured water. And that's what it is, because water is alive, right? You can talk to it, you can get information from it. There's information that can be accessed through water. You know, that's why quartz crystal, right? When you hold the quartz crystal, it has so much information and so much memory to it because it's primarily water. You know, you go back to Atlantean times. Atlantean times were connected into quartz. They were huge into quartz. Everything was built out of quartz. Their beds were built out of quartz. Homes were built out of quartz. You know, all these things resonating at quartz because not only did you have the piezoelectric effect, but you also had the water itself, right? So when we look at this, you know, there are a few different ways, very simple ways to just structure water. And you can use quartz. You can use, for example, like a piece of linen or silk, hang a piece of quartz down, and then just do a pendulum over the top and make a vortex, go to the right, go to the left, eight times to the right, eight times to the left. That pointy part of the quartz will then point down into the water, start to restructure it, very simple way. Another simple way is you can get yourself a copper or a silver spoon, 100% copper or silver spoon. Just put that in the water and stir it, and that's it. And what you're doing is when you're stirring, you're creating structure, right? And this is what the farmers used to do back in the day. The farmers used to take their little, you know, whatever concoction it was that they were using, they'd put it in a big barrel drum in front of them, they'd get a wood spoon or copper spoon, whatever it may be, and they would just stir that for like an hour to the right, and they would stir it to the left, and they would sing while they did it, right? Because the what? frequency of 432 hertz, which is coming out of the voice, started to heal the water and structure it. So when they poured that all over their plants, their plants pretty much went wild because the structure of the water was there and because the intention, which was being set, right? Because they're showing care and love as they sit there and stir, was being put into the water, same to putting into the food, and, you know, when you look at that, then they would then amplify the energetic properties of water. And that's the thing is water will take on anything. It will also take on toxins and chemicals. So if you put toxins and chemicals in it, you're going to get poisoned because the water is like, okay, you know, I'm going to give you the opposite now. So, you know, when we really look at the structure abilities, there's so many ways to structure water, even just putting water through a funnel. You know, that's a simple way too. And it was interesting because... Victor Schauberger created a funnel that was made out of copper and he would put it in like a river that was building up a lot of algae, right? Like they had tons mm -hmm. of algae and they're like, we don't know what to do. They started making a little vortex uh, flow chart that, or flow, flow system. And as it would flow through into the water and come back up, it would spray like a sprout, like a fountain and all the algae went away just like that. So, you know, when we go to these things about like cleaning up the planet and doing all of this, we've already discovered all of this stuff. And he learned from sitting out in nature. He was like, okay, a river works like this. This is what we should do, you know? And a, a plant works like this. Let's do it this way, you know? And I realized it was very simple, his ways, but it's we have to look at things that way because otherwise, you know, we get we get twisted thoughts and, and, and we're brainwashed into believing something that's not. And then we make things which are like adapters to adapters to adapters and we never are figuring out just the simplest solutions because nature is so simple you know that's the best way to put it wow um victor schauberger deserves a lot of credit for sitting out on his porch looking at a river i mean i wonder where he lived that's one thing because that sounds like an amazing place to be um but i really do like you going into the different ways to structure water because i'm thinking about living in the city and if you're hearing this now you're probably thinking well i'm in the city and we just get all pipe stuff and then at the same time i go i buy my water bottle i get everything some people get stuff delivered we got the water cooler that you can now get like the poland whatever brand you decide to pay monthly for and they ship it to you and you have your dispenser and stuff um you you mentioned having a crystal you mentioned having um just spiraling stuff with um uh stainless steel and copper is i i did hear i'm not sure if you told me this but there's an egg involved like is there like what are some other ways that you can structure water that could be so good for somebody that is 
at um, living in the city and living in more of a suburb area because usually you're kind of limited on space and what you can do. So the easiest way is with that and just re rewinding back there, the two different spoons you could use are silver or copper. So, so you, with stainless steel, it actually diminishes the structure, which we can talk about that as well too. But wait, real so, quick, yeah, real quick. Stainless steel, it's kind of related. When you're cooking, say no to stainless steel pots. Just go for like copper, I would say. So you want to look at different alternatives, right? So mm -hmm. copper, there's different things. With There's some that used to be made out of bronze. There's things that used to be made out of clay, right? Ceramics and all the different types of clay. That's what we used to use. We used to use, use a lot of wood, right? Like you used mm -hmm. a wood board. You could cook with the wood board too, you know? So there were different things that we used to use but we've had this takeover of iron and steel. That's the best mm -hmm. way to describe it. It's pretty much all over the place. And you know, that's, that's definitely a uh, takeover of the iron age, right? The iron right. age conquering and removing everything from the bronze age and all the people who were connected to the earth. And the easiest way to put it is when iron goes into soil, it diminishes the magnetism of the soil, the life force energy causes droughts, all these issues. When copper and bronze go into the soil, it doesn't impact the magnetism and it's an electrical conductor, so it increases that energy. So that's the easiest way to put it. There's two different things. So we've been sold the bait and switch on that. But wow. with the structuring, um, what you can do is you can, like I said, you can get a silver spoon or a copper spoon and do your, you, you can structure your water yourself. You can get one big gallon, you know, get a big glass gallon or even terracotta clay, like a big clay gallon. And you can just sit there and structure it. It doesn't take more than, you know, five, 10 minutes. You just set your intention to structure the water and you just sit there and stir it. And that will start to bring that life force back into the water. That's the easiest way. Other ideas is you can put like, for example, there's stones like aquamarine and quartz, and you can place those into, for example, like a, a let's say a copper holding water tank. And you'd place those quartz and aqu aquamarine stones at the bottom and just let them sit overnight. And the water will take on the structure of the stones, right? Because like we were talking about, it takes on anything, whatever it may be. So if you take, for example, a stone and you place that into the water, it will take on that structure. The other option too, is they used to do stuff with like beeswax as well, because basically beeswax would allow the water to take on the hexagon structure, right? Mm. Because everything has an imprint. So that was another option as well. Little like beeswax, beeswax balls. Um, you know, so there's all these different things that a person can do, which is very simple, but just think of water as this beautiful conscious structure that takes on an imprint of whatever it may be. So whether you wanna bring love to your water with just your mind and, and your hands, you could do that, or you can just do it with your hands as well, where you just structure the water with your hands. You can sit here and structure the water thinking about the structure, and you could think of a thought of the structure you wanna make the water or the intention, or if you wanna give yourself energy, or if you wanna elevate your health, whatever it may be, that thought process goes through the ether, connects into that water, and then allows that water to structure. So you can do it. There's there's tons of free ways and very cost effective ways to do it as well. And I try to give a lot of different options because, you know, depending on the person's situation and everything, you know, you want to be able to have all different things. But those would be probably the simplest three ways to structure the water in your home if you're in an urban setting. Mm, perfect. And um, with those is there a specific type of way to structure water where you are gearing towards impurities like, and even chemicals? Cause you have fluoride in the water and you have your, you know, your generic water filter and you know that it's only taking out of taking out heavy metals, but is it enough to put the, to, to structure the water with the techniques that you said to get rid of chemicals or is there more of like, um, maybe less cost effective, but uh, necessary methods to get rid of chemicals like that. So it can help. And, you know, I, I would, I would say the chemicals can still be present, right? Like all chemicals will still be present, but there are also alternatives for filtering your water. And for example, if you want the most simplest, just to make it really easy, activated charcoal blocks, that's what they use. They just place that in the water that will start to absorb all the toxins and everything that's in there. Charcoal will also help structure the water, right? Because it's taking on the charcoal as well too, you know, so that's an option. The other option is a person can get a distiller 
and start distilling their water so that their water is zero parts per million and it's pure. It's electrically charged water. It's like rainwater. It's the exact same thing because it's funny because distilled water says, you know, use this for your electrical device, which what are hmm. we electrical devices, you know, so that's another option. They can get like a counter unit, you know, that they can distill their water. The other option is, is if let's say they're doing their whole place, you know, then you would get something like a reverse osmosis filter with a fluoride filter. You know, they have like these 10 stage and 12 stage different units that a person can get as well to filter their water. You know, and there's a lot of little small ones that you can just put on your sink or like your shower, right? Because like chlorine is a really bad one, you know, but like there's a lot of different things that you can do filtering wise. But once you filter your water, the easiest way to say it is once you filter your water, then you can structure your water. But, you know, even if let's just say, you know, you cannot do any of those things, still structuring your water and putting intention into it is going to be better than no matter what is going into the body. Because even if that molecule or if, if molecules are real, but even if that, that, that situation of the structure is damaged, it will still be improved no matter what, you know, and mm. just putting it in, like I was saying, just putting your water in a copper mug or a copper container or a clay mug, a big clay mug, that already starts to bring back the structure. That's why people, when they're drinking water and they go to drink out of, when you go to the restaurant, what do they give you? It's always out of glass. They don't mm -hmm. give you plastic because plastic makes it taste bad because it changes the structure the entire time. So it tastes horrible, but when you put it in a glass, you're like, man, that's refreshing, you know? And that's the little things that take on, and that's just a, a person at a restaurant just pouring you a glass of water from from glass to glass, you know? that They're not giving you a plastic water bottle. So just those simple things, water will take that on instantaneously. And I think that's one of the most important things to realize about water is that it takes on things instantaneously. It's not, uh, it needs, you know, years and years. It's split of the second, you know, same thing with everything related to ether as well, too. Wow. That's, and you made me think um, getting like copper straws. I don't even know if they make those. I know they make stainless steel straws, um, which is going to pull out the electrons, but you don't hear too many stories of copper straws and i do have a copper mug but i was for more of a uh, alcoholic beverage that uh, i used to drink a lot and i might re um reuse that for water now thanks to you and i i did see you uh for anybody for if you're watching uh matt literally just took a sip out of a a, a copper mug and he's just hanging out right now and yeah this one it's nice was made in korea and korea used to make a ton of copper and they used to also make copper watering cans as well, too. And if you look up the copper watering can, it used to have a, like, it used to look like a kind of like a snake, right? The spout, because as it poured through that curvy spout, it would structure the water and it's in copper. So it's improving the electrical charge. And then people used to water their plants with copper gardening water app, uh, watering cans. And it also had that curve. So it would structure the water the entire time. So, you know, you look at time like 1920s, 1910, 1880s, all of those times, they were doing this stuff. It just has been forgotten over time because they work against us with our memory so that mm -hmm. we don't remember these things. And then we start using whatever we've been given, which is like you said, stainless steel, steel, mm -hmm. iron, stainless steel, and just repeat, 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 repeat. Wow. And I, I'm familiar with seeing that in stores when I was actually shopping for a tea kettle and some of them have this weird wavy spout. I'm like, this is, that's so why like unnecessary. Meanwhile, me <laughs> being complete, I'm, I'm making fun of their design. Like you guys are just dumb. Like that's just so unnecessary. It can break easy. And I'm over here not having a clue as to the deeper meaning behind it. Um, and then Oh man, I was going to ask you something. I completely forgot because you were talking about the copper mugs. You're talking about pouring. Oh, there are products out there where it's a, um, a water bottle or like a tumbler. And at the bottom, there's sacred geometry. And I don't think you mentioned sacred geometry, but the shapes themselves, I think, pull in that geometric sacred spiral and is it technically doing that automatically would you say so it can right because the image is there everything is like a fractal right so it's always there and present 
Um, it just depends on how well it's designed, right? Because mm. sometimes with sacred geometry, it has to it has to be like a mirror, right? It has to be to the left and to the right, and it needs to be identical. And that's where the like fractals or fractal antennas come out too as well, right? They usually look exactly to the left the same as exactly to the right. So if it is not that, it might not be as structuring as it. Also too, if your mind is not connected to that sacred geometry, right? Like you just pour the water and you're like, oh, it's structuring. Then that also, because you're lacking the intention into the water that you bought that bottle for, then that will also diminish the sacred energy that comes from that geometry, if that makes sense. If that, that's the, kind of the easiest way to describe it. Interesting. I do like the other ways better just because you are in charge and you have more control over the energy and you don't know, like you said, how the image was made, if it's a little off because it's mass produced. Not to knock the idea of it, I think is a great idea. We're all discovering many different ways to do this. So I appreciate that. So we learned a lot of stuff and I'm, I have like, we can go on for a while. And this is like the tip of the iceberg, I would say, just because I, I feel like the right materials, knowing what you could do if you're in an urban environment and you're wondering, well, I need to drink better water. Cause now that I know I, I can't unknow it. And the curiosity is probably setting in and you're thinking, all right, let, let me try this out. Um, I did have a question though. One last question. Do you know of a way, Matt, if you could measure that the water is getting more energy? Is there like a interesting way or yeah. How could you measure? Is, is, is it possible to measure it? The simplest way with that would be to take the water that you set the intention into and structured and putting it into a freezer and freezing it and looking at, sorry about that, looking at the crystalline structure of the water as it comes out of the freezer. That's the easiest way to show the biggest change in the physical form. There are devices like biogeometry devices and other things which can measure, you know, those are definitely a tool, but if we're gonna go real, real simple, mm -hmm. you can structure the water, place it into the freezer and look at the difference between that water and the water that you did not structure and just see what the difference of the crystalline structure is. Because water should take on most likely like an image of a snowflake, right? If it's structured or it'll take on different hexagonal, different uh, uh, shapes or like a decagon, hexagon, octagon, some sort of basically fractal sacred geometry shape you'll kind of see. So that would be the easiest way to determine if your water has been structured and you can see the difference just in the physical form without buying a very expensive device and seeing the differences with that. Got it. So to reiterate, if you do freeze it, look for geometric shapes that are balanced and not like wonky and weird looking. There is that experiment where I th Hashimoto, is it Hashimoto? Dr. Emoto. That's Dr. Emoto. Yeah. Where he did the, he froze and crystallized different bottles of water and, and you went under a microscope and you can see hate and love and hate looks like a dirty mess yes. of just nastiness. And then the, I love you, the love, I'm happy. It looks like beautiful. Like you said, like a snowflake and then like just happy was like simple. So like each emotion had its own crystal, which is pretty cool. Um, Awesome. Thank you so much for breaking that down. Uh, we went into some areas that I'm thinking, oh yeah, I think I know a thing or two. Like, you know, let's see if I, if I hear anything new and, and you never cease to amaze or surprise me. So I really appreciate you and all the research that you've been going through. Um, you don't just stop at what you see at the headline. You dive deep, you read the book, you even remember the names of the people that you've read about, which is, um, Unfortunately, not too many people are able to drop those names as often as you. So I really appreciate that. Um, as we come to a close, is there anything that you're working on um, that you would like to share? Or um, if and if not, and you're you're doing a bunch of different different things, where can we find you? So you can find us on culti cultivateelevate.com. But at the moment, I'm working on a water filter, which is funny that you said it's a shower filter mm -hmm. that works to basically structure the water. I have some different ideas with that and trying to put them together so that people can just structure their shower water alone, you know, because I think that's really important because you're sitting in there 
sitting in there for a while, you know, and the water's coming onto you. So I'm working on something with that, doing some stuff with an electroculture book, which is related to gardening and frequency, right? So the power of copper in gardening. So I'm doing some stuff with that. And the last one I want to hit on just related to this topic as well, is that if a person wants to drill a well for themselves, they can look into different companies that will come out and they will find primary water for them using different types of technology that basically can analyze where the water is in the ground. Or you can also reach out to a dowser and dowsers can come out and find you water in case a person wanted to, you know, take their homestead to another level with their water, they can actually find primary water as well. And that's the other option, right? Because I, I don't know if we hit on that one, but just related to if people live in an urban setting, but let's say people live out in the rural setting as well too, they can also find access to primary water using either, for example, a company that can come out or a dowser to find primary water by them. Because that's another thing, as you are growing food, you want access to the best water you can possibly have. Or if you're, like you said, living in an urban setting, you want water access to the best water as possible. But those are things I'm working on and just more products, right? Working on new things as we keep going out. We just launched our chai product, which has been going pretty much crazy. Um, we're working on some different things. I'm related to Shilajat, which also helps structure water, which we will talk about when that's all launching, which mm. is really cool. Hydrogen, all related to the hydrogen factor, but naturally occurring in nature. So I thought that was fascinating. But working on that, and then that's about it. Just reading more books. That's it. Just trying to delve more into books and kind of connect into things that I feel that we've lost. And if I can go out and say anything to anybody, it's read more books because I feel... You know, there's a lot of information being put out there and it's great. But also when you get into a book, there's just something different about it. You're holding it, the frequency of the materials that you're holding. And if we're going to relate this to frequency and everything we've talked about today, the older books written in the 1900s were, they were uh, designed when you held them, they were out of linen and different types of materials, which are very natural to the body, linen and cotton right? And all of the different papers and all the, the trees and everything else, but the actual binding and the coverage were made out of linen, which is a naturally healing frequency. So hmm. when you're holding this book, it's very healing to your body as well. Versus when you're holding a tablet, which is holding emitting microwave radiations, it's a completely different way of learning because one you're absorbing with the books and the other one is making you forget everything that you're doing in the first book. <laughs> so that's, I guess, if I'm going to say anything, dive into more books and be more connected into that because a lot of this information is is becoming lost and we really need to bring it forward because we don't want to move into the future of where we don't have access to this information or it puts us in, like we talked about in the beginning, the scarcity, fear mindset of everything is this and all this chaos when in reality, it's like, no, none of that is actually true, but you know, it's being pushed onto our brains all the time. Wow. That's a, again, a lot of great information. I like how you like, yeah. And, and after you gave a whole list of stuff that you're working on and that's it, you know, just a couple of things. <laughs> um, it would be great if I can, um, after this, we'll, we'll go over, um, some of those books, maybe, uh, um, we'll throw in the show notes, uh, like the top three books that you think would be great for maybe this specific subject matter. And I think everybody would appreciate that. Well, yeah. thanks again for hopping on, Matt. You can go visit us at newagehuman.com. And if you're listening, we would appreciate it that you like and subscribe and write a review. If you're watching, um, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, share with a friend. Feel free. We want to get the word out. Let everybody know that there's more to this world than we knew. And there's some really good things that you can do without spending too much money too. So thanks again, Matt. And until next time, you're always welcome to come back. Thank you. And we'll talk next time.